Chota Yasaoka. Yeah, Naya Adventures. This was perhaps the deck of the Challenger Gauntlet. We saw Sam Hardy pilot this all the way to a world championship spot for himself. So definitely a breakout deck there, but kind of fell by the wayside for this event. We didn't see too many people bringing it, and it makes sense. It's a deck that is targeting going over top of Gruul Adventures, so you really want to be getting an edge in those creature matchups. You see the White Splash is for Giant Killer, which is an excellent answer to cards like Love's Truff Beast, Bone Crusher Giant, and most importantly, Goldspan Dragon. But you also see Showdown of the Skulls, giving you that ability to get that refuel as well as make your creatures bigger. So Shoda really looking for creature matchups and adventures typically really good against rogues. Yeah, Shintaro Ishimura running Demir rogues here. Mani, he does not like this matchup. Uh, what does the rogues deck need to do to overcome Naya adventures? Well, last time Shintaro played this matchup, he said, I need to draw Vantress Gargoyle. And then after the match, he said, I drew Vantress Gargoyle. But he had the giant killer. Uh. That's the that's the problem with this white version of Naya Adventures. Against Gruul, at least, if you land a Vantress Gargoyle, you know that they don't have much removal that deals for damage. Unfortunately for Shintaro, this Naya Adventures feels like it's built to counter him. Not only does Shoda have all of the normal aggressive creatures that are good against Rose, but he has four copies of Giant Killer to just make sure this Vantress Gargoyle that is Shintaro's trump card to the matchup will have no effect. All right, well, here we go. We've got the final round of Swiss play Shota Yasaoka versus Shintaro Ishimura, Naya Adventures versus Demir Rogues. It's going to be an uphill battle for Shintaro. Can he get it done? We'll find out as we head on down to the feature match area. Thanks, Maria. Coverage of round number 12 begins now. We're back in the feature match area here. Riley and I are joined by Corey Baumeister. And this time around, Shota Yasuoka versus Shintaro Ishimura. Naya Adventures playing off against Demir Rogues. Corey, we've already characterized this matchup as a terrible one for Shintaro Ishimura. But he won't be too oh, yeah. unhappy about it, given the fact that he is effectively locked up at the top eight here. Yeah, exactly. Shintaro is just trying to kind of do the block. If you have a really, really bad matchup, well, the one thing you want to do is try to get that matchup out of the top eight to give yourself the best chance to tag that number one seat to the world championship. Dream crushing here. Dream, Dream crushing. Dream crushing, exactly. With a loss, it, it doesn't look too good for Yasuoka. I don't know exactly how the uh, the, the scrum will look like, but uh, I know that at seven and five, Yasuoka will really, be, have, to, really have to sweat. Ishimura in a prime position and look if you have to face this matchup it's good for it to be in a in a game that or in a match that isn't going to you know knock you out of top eight uh, contention here so Ishimura kind of a little bit of a rest for him I guess he's still going to want to play sharp want to play his best but uh the pressure certainly off him here uh now for the Hall of Famer instead Shoti Yasuoka he's got everything to play for here because a win here uh Corey effectively will lock him up as well with eight wins yeah, we'll lock it up. Still has a chance uh, and a decent chance to make it, even if Shota loses. But then you might have to be put in that position where you have to play a tiebreaker match. And that feels really bad if you go loss, loss, and then don't make it into the top eight. So, yeah, Shota wants to just lock it up right now. Both players committing a couple of piddly creatures to the board here. A couple of Heart's Desire tokens in the form of those one ones, And a Soaring Thought Thief opening the account here for Ishimura. His Camel Spell's and, threatening to do some work here against Love Struck Beast. Lofty Denial just going to take care of that one. Yep, nice counter spell that we don't see a lot of here, but Lofty Denial is a nice one when you're playing instead of Crabs, Gargoyles. You got another flyer that kind of turns on that super mode instead of just being, well, Dwari Disruption or Force Spike uh, uh, for, the, for the more franchise players there if you want to go way back. In comes the Rogue. Now, in hand, you can see Bone Crusher Giant. There's a showdown of the skulls as well here for Shota Yasuoka. The card that's gone up and down, hasn't it? It, it was it was huge when it first came out. Oh yeah. And then kind of fell off, and uh, now it's back here. Obviously, it's it's a, a I mean, I was going to say a big part of this deck. It's not even as big a part as it used to be. These Naya decks used to play the full four. Now they've gone down to just two here. Yasuoka only playing two copies. 
yeah, that's the thing is if you play that on turn four, while the effect is so unbelievably powerful and standard, if you just play mm. it on turn four, you essentially are doing nothing to the battlefield. It's four mana, do nothing because it does not affect the battlefield. You're not putting power into play. You get the effects next turn uh, and you get some huge effects. But with standard where your opponent can just go gold spread dragon or emerge an ultimatum or Kiora best the sea god, there's so many huge plays yeah. that kind of go over the top of it. So yeah, I was pretty shocked even in this Naya Adventure deck to see only two. It's like the reason to play Naya, I would think. I like this position to Ishimura, though. He's found his crippling fear, oh. which is uh, going to be really, really good against the, the obviously the very creature-heavy uh, Naya Adventures deck. He's also sitting pretty with a Disdainful Stroke, the Negate. I mean, these aren't cards that you would consider to be all-stars uh, in yeah. in the matchup against Naya Adventures, but they, they threaten to do a lot of work against the hand that uh, Yasuoka has here. Yeah, they have two great targets right now, Showdown and Aziga's Chariot. And the one thing that we're seeing that's really different from when we were commentating this match a couple days ago when these two played earlier, and it was the fact that Shota Yasoka game one drew four Edgewall Innkeepers, if you remember that. That it's just really tough to deal with that, and we're seeing Shota not have a ton of card advantage here and kind of just running out of steam. And Rogues is really good at dealing with a deck that is just one for wanting powerful spells. That's the whole MO of the deck. We saw Ishimura pause there to consider because I think what he was thinking is, is if he draws a land next turn, he can actually hold onto the counter spell, play the Crippling Fear, there, thereby effectively rendering the Asika's Chariot irrelevant because yep. there wouldn't be anything to crew it, but ultimately decides to get rid of it. And I think that was the safer call. Uh, you know, I think it would have been a little bit of fancy play syndrome to crippling through away those creatures because of course you play something like a bone crusher giant which you know ishimura doesn't have an answer to and all of yep. a sudden that uh that that vehicle's getting in for for four no worries so i think yep. just dealing with the uh with the chariot while you can certainly makes a lot of sense and look this crippling fear is it, it's gonna do some work at some point that's for sure yeah, absolutely. No, I like the safe play because even if you leave the Cadillac on the battlefield, sure, you can crew it later, but what if you just draw another Heart's Desire, right? Like, even copying 1-1s one -ones is still pretty risky and still pretty brutal for Shintaro's chances. So, yeah, like get that get Azika's Chariot out of there. It's the card that Rogues doesn't want to see the most in this matchup in game one. Games two, you see these escape cards, and those are, you know, the bane of their existence. But uh, game one, Azika's Chariot is what you really want to control. So I'm attack with both now, and Bone Crusher Giant will come and finish off that two three. That explains the uh, otherwise rather questionable attack with the one one, but getting trading the one one and half of a Bone Crusher Giant for a uh, Soaring Thought Thief is uh, that's fine. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I'm happy with that. That's fine. Shintaro kind of saw this that play was possible even as soon as turn two when Shota made this attack. So probably knew it was there, but now getting a creature in the graveyard when you have Luris. So let's say we top take a land and go Luris, Soaring Thought Thief, and have Disdainful Stroke open uh, is a nice little sequence here if we get a land. There yep, it finds, is. Finds one as well. So that's, I think, what we're going to see here. Disdainful Stroke mm -hmm. kept up something like an Embercleave, something like the Showdown of the Skulls that's in hand. There's not a lot of other targets apart from the Seeker's Chariot. No, I'm just... Scanning the list now. I think it is. Oh, no, Goldspan Dragon, of course. Goldspan Dragon. Yep. Yep. Shota's list from what we saw in the Challenger Gauntlet a while ago, where it was just basically that deck was just trying to not die the whole time in the hands mm -hmm. of like Sam Party and the rest of his testing team. Shota's version is a lot more aggressive, thinking maybe that they're, they're going to need it. Going to need to try to go over the top of some of these powerful decks. And I, I really do like the deck list. Actually, the more I look at this, the more I realize Disdainful Stroke is actually a pretty good card here. I sort of look at it as, oh, I guess Nair Adventure yeah. is not going to do that much work. But when you actually consider all the thing that, things that it hits, it hits all the hard-hitting four and five drops. The Seeker's Chariot, mm. Showdown of the Skulls. It hits gold, uh, Goldspan Dragon. But do you know what else it also gets? Shadow mm. Skull Smashing, right? And that's yeah. a card that in this situation, oh, I guess you're one land short. But like if you had a, another land and a, and, a, and a Smashing here, that could clear this this board up in, in, in one fell swoop. So... Yep. Having Disdainful Stroke is a little of a bit of an insurance policy for Ishimura is actually really good. Yeah, it does seem really, really strong here. The, the dynamics of this matchup is pretty interesting. Normally, cards like Giant Killer are just complete stone blanks in mm. this matchup. But in this particular version that Shintaro is playing, you have the Vantress Gargoyles that you can actually kill with that. So normally, that's just the first thing you take out as the Nye Adventure decks, just because it, it's not going to hit anything unless you have, well, four Soaring Thought Thieves. But, you know, that's that's getting... A little, uh, a little crazy here, but we're probably going to see 
code to actually leave that card in to respect Gargoyle. So Crippling Fear can clear the way for an attack here. Um, is there enough mana? I think one short, one short of of, you, of uh, attacking with the the hive as well. Yeah, it looks like we're probably gonna name Cat and then just bring back Soaring Thought Thief. And doing it this way, normally you think maybe I should attack with this Thought Thief first, but it actually just nets you a little bit more damage getting in with the Nightmare Cat here of mm -hmm. Lurus and gains you a little bit of life, which is a little more important than milling two extra cards here. Yeah, I think so too. Putting yourself back up to 15. Nice and respectable life total here. Edge Hall Innkeeper into the Giant Killer is going to keep the cards coming for Yasa Oka, but he's kind of... He's outstripped on the battlefield. Oof, he's, he oof. isn't the one with the big creatures, but that's a huge draw here, Corey. A massive draw for, for Yasuoka. Yeah, this game was going to be a nightmare for Shota until we found that Bone Crusher Giant, and that was just perfect. Oh my goodness. Yeah, not Ooh, only killing the Lurus, of course, <laughs> but one good draw deserves another, and here it is. All gas, wow. no breaks. Look at this. Double drown the lock. Soaring Thought Thief, couple lands in hand here for Ishimura, so he's got plenty of business, but I tell you what, that Bone Crusher Giant was a huge draw, not only killing really the Lurus, but also drawing an extra card off of the Innkeeper, so that was massive. Yeah, there's a story to be told in this game, and Shintaro wants it to be the, the story of revenge and uh, get the rematch win here, and with a top deck like that, put himself in a position where it's looking a lot better it was looking pretty miserable before that into the story, so that was a needed draw. Another edge wall innkeeper here, but nothing that he can uh, really do with it. Just a Jasper yeah. Sentinel, the other card in hand. I believe there's a Den of the Bugbear up in the top left as well, so he can certainly get aggressive oh. if he wants to, but he'll know that after that into the story, he knows there's some business he's got to fight through Yasuoka. Exactly. Like, it seems like it's Den time. Maybe do a little bit of tapping with Giant Killer. You either have the option of attacking with Den and then just playing both green creatures in your hand. That runs a bit of a foul if there is another crippling fear from Shintaro. So I like this play of just playing it pretty conservatively and using the giant killer to just tap down a creature um, and just be happy getting in there for five now that mm -hmm. uh, we've lost the Den. We're not only for four now, keeping back that innkeeper because, you know... So good. Uh, yeah, so Oka playing around all of the flash creatures that could come down and block the 1-1 one, one profitably. You see one in the hand, Thor Soaring Thought Thief. Now, interesting decision here for Ishimura because he can technically trade. He can cast Soaring Thought Thief, which will become a 3-3 when it enters the battlefield, trade with mm -hmm. the giant. But I don't think he wants to do that. He's got his opponent on a two-turn clock with a drown backup. I think you just want to go full aggro here. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would just be want to go be going in his hard as humanly possible here this giant killer can tap down one creature hive can attack and make sure we get six damage mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. putting shout to the five and all of a sudden you're playing vantress gargoyle which uh, checks notes is a five power creature to be able to clear the way we're one mana short of going ventress gargoyle plus drown in the lock um on the giant killer at shota's end step to just cleanly deal with this game but advantage uh shintaro for sure uh, trying to accomplish the block here into top eight for Shota Yasuoka. Yeah, he, we've already said that Ishimura trying to do some dream crushing, and he's certainly <laughs> on the way to doing exactly that here. Will he play the gargoyle out? Keeps Ooh. a crippling fear on top. Oh, my goodness me. Wow. Oh, the hits start coming, and they don't stop coming here for Ishimura. Ranger class off the top for Yasuoka. Spicy one-off in his deck. He's going to play it out, make a wolf and maybe even level it up here in order to start powering up his creatures. But I think at this stage, my, he's falling a long way behind here, Corey. Yeah, this is game here because we have Drown in the Lock for Giant Killer. There's no way Shota is going to be able to put enough pressure on to threaten lethal by any means. You killed the Giant Killer at end step. You Crippling Fear, hopefully name Rogues from Shintaro, and then you attack for six, and there's just nothing that really can be done. Even a Jaspera Sentinel to block, that is going to fall by the wayside of Crippling Fear as well. So game mm. one to Shintaro, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like it with that uh, that Crippling Fear off the top. That'll clear the way nicely. And Nidwall Innkeeper just uh, to follow things up. So Drown the Lock, target the uh, the Giant Killer. Has to do this now, otherwise it would be uh, you'd be able to respond to this Crippling Fear by tapping something. So Crippling Fear, keep all the humans around. Why not? Let You can keep your Nidwall Innkeepers. <laughs> I don't even care. In they come, Soaring Thought Thieves, some irrelevant mill triggers. And game number one, unexpectedly, it has to be said, goes to Shintaro Ishimura. 
Yeah, absolutely. Keeping the edge while innkeepers around us, just a, a small flex there. You got to love that. Be like, yeah, you can have this. You can Why have it, man. I don't care. Keep, your, keep, 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 the, keep the best one <laughs> drop in your deck. I don't care. I'm, I'm going to get you dead anyway. So you can see here some pretty significant ma changes made. The sideboard outcome clunkers yes. like... Uh, well, I mean, I, I call it a clunker. It's one of the best cards in standard, but certainly in this matchup, Goldspan Dragon is not what you want. Instead, stuff like, yes, great. Clothus, fantastic. Ox of Agonis, great. Removal spells like Fire Prophecy. Masked Vandal, I guess. Gargoyles. Is that just against the Gargoyles? Or is that maybe it's against Crippling Fear, mate? Always it's, survives uh, a Crippling Fear. Yeah, that is. Yeah, probably, I suppose. That's probably not it, but still. That's probably not it. Yeah, Crippling Fear is... I mean, yeah, I guess it's every creature type. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's minus three, minus three. But yeah, good point. It is a, <laughs> It is whatever they're going to name. That's for sure. Yeah, that's got to be why it's in the in the deck, Riley. And some minor changes here for Ishimura, who brings in uh, Heartless Act, Lash of Malice, and Cling to Dust. Of course, the Cling to Dust, the counter to uh, stuff like Ox of Agonis. Out comes Disdainful Stroke. Lofty denial cards like that. Edge will innkeeper in for one. Going to open the account here for Yasuoka. A good start for him. Innkeeper into Magda. Yeah, we'll see if this power word kill just takes out Magda right away to stop the the mana advantage, especially with Shota missing some lands here. We got that spike field hazard to just be able to play as a land, but as it looks, Shintaro Samara's hand is just a Demir control deck here, and it, mm. it seems like it's going to line up pretty well. We've seen these crippling fears be less than ideal um, or interesting, as we say in the booth here, Riley, uh, earlier on a couple days ago for day one of this competition, but here is a spot where it looks like they are going to be excellent. Yeah, going to be way better here. Let's see if there's a power word kill, or are we just going to flash in the Soaring Thought Thief? No attacks from Yasuoka, recognizing the threat of a flash 1-3. Not the draw that Ishimura wanted to see there. He wants lands. These Crippling Fears are potentially going to do a lot of work if they can be cast, but they're not going to be cast on time. He does have a Swamp hiding out the back of the hand, but he needs the fourth land in order to cast Crippling Fear. Still got a turn to draw it, I suppose. And we got a cling as well. Milling some of these cards over, you are able to just cling anything, uh, draw a card, give yourself two looks at Crippling Fear. And, and as it stands right now, if Shota were to leave up some mana when this Crippling Fear goes off to be able to use something like Stomp on a Gargoyle or Soaring Thought Thief, whatever uh, Shintaro decides to name, then at least you can get something out of it. But otherwise, it is just a one-sided Wrath of God right now, which is so incredibly powerful. Just, I mean, always. <laughs> Anytime you're you're leaving your two creatures and you're killing your opponent's entire board for four mana, that's unheard of most of the time. So this this attack pretty, tilly, pretty clearly telegraphs the fact that there is a Bone Crusher Giant in hand for Yasuoka, putting the extra counter uh -huh. on the Edgewell Innkeeper to make sure all the creatures have two power. Very clearly says, I've got a Bone Crusher and I will trade Stomp for whatever you, uh, for whatever you... If you block anything, you're going to lose your uh, your gargoyle. But in this position, I think Ishimura with that crippling fear, does he just take it? No, he's going to trade. Okay. Yeah, I think I like this just because I think Shintaro is just thinking, well, if you have Bone Crusher, no matter what, I'm going to lose this creature because crippling fear, if we get the land, of course, because crippling fear is going to shrink either Soaring Thought Thief or Gargoyle. You kind of have to pick. Of course, you'd rather keep the Soaring Thought Thief alive. Right, and, um, and you and lose the Gargoyle anyway, yeah. Exactly. So you might as well soak up two damage just in case you don't draw land number four. And I'm pretty, I guess, I think I, I think we saw all creatures is the big problem with Kling. I, I I think it is all creatures. Yep. Yeah. That is really unfortunate that we didn't build anything and you see the head nod from Shintaro. Be like, all right, I guess I'll draw a card. Yeah, of course, the Cling to Dust would only be able to gain life here. You can't just snip out the... Uh... The exile, oh, sorry, an exile. The uh, the stomp from uh, Bone Crusher. Yeah, Giant. yeah. I choose stomp. Here, here choose goes stomp. the layer. <laughs> it's a split card, right? You get to pick one of the halves. That's how it works. Kling still doesn't find a land here. Power word kill kept up. Still, I mean, Ishimura is not falling too far behind here. Yeah, and that was actually a really, really strong draw. Shota recognizing that. Yeah, my whole board falls to crippling fear right now. I just want something that gets out of that. And Lovestruck mm -hmm. Beast is yeah. huge for that. So I wouldn't be too shocked if we just see Edgewall Innkeeper into Lovestruck Beast 
Uh, or that to not have to use your treasure is definitely uh, viable as well. But with this play, you do leave yourself somewhat vulnerable yeah. to crippling fear. You lose the whole board, Ugh. especially if you heart's desire here. So nice play by Chota to not heart's desire there and make this card any better than it already will be. Dodges the uh, the crippling fear once again. Oh, sorry, the uh, yeah, dodges the crippling land, fear once yeah. again with the land. And now Ishimura considering keeping back the one three. No, goes for it. Mills two. Showdown of the skulls hits the bin. And Merfolk Windrobber joins the party, and it can't yet be sacrificed. Interesting. Only seven cards in the bin? I think seven, but this power word kill will make it eight, and then you can right. block and sacrifice it. So we'll probably see whatever Ranger class puts a counter on, either mm -hmm. Bone Crusher Giant or the 3 3 Wolf. Kill that with power word kill, block the other one, sacrifice. Two draws at land number four again, and hope for the best. And the Crippling Fear still uh, should uh, be on cleanup duty. Here's the Heart's Desire, so more fuel for the Crippling Fear fire here. Mm. And will Magda be played as well? No, it's going to be the 5-5, five five, and this makes sense. This gives you a bit of resilience, gives you an extra card as well, critically, with that Edgewall Innkeeper. And chop down. Not at its best here when there's no uh, Gargoyles for takedown. Now, so this Ranger is class spot. is going to put a counter on the Giant. We should see... Power Word Kill take that down, as you mentioned before, Corey, and then a chump block with the wolf, a chump block against the wolf with the Merfolk Wind Robber uh, into cycle, into hopefully a land for Ishimura so he can cast his Crippling Fear. Yeah, here's a spot that's getting really, really rough for Shintaro. Shintaro's hand just looked excellent and really well positioned to deal with what Shota was doing, but now with, with missing so many land four drops that it, it's getting rough because now all Shota is trying to do is diversify his creatures so that there's multiple creatures that would survive Crippling Fear. It's the only sweeper that's going to be available. And, you know, at this stage of the game, the only thing Shota really has to be that worried about is just losing all of all of, all of his creatures. And right now it's just not going to be possible with Lovestruck Beast and with Ranger Class pumping up all these 3-3s three to get it out of range. And Jeez. no land again. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. Look at that. A rueful smile on the face of Shintaro Ishimura. He cannot find this fourth land for love nor money. I think he has missed it, what, five turns in a row now? Something like that? Four turns in a row? Yeah, this is unfortunate. Absolutely unfortunate. And, you know, you can just do the same play that you did last turn. run back the same turn, turn right? Yeah. <laughs> it's run back and the same turn. Play the wind robber. Bad. Keep up power word kill to kill something. Sacrifice the Merfolk Wind Robber. Hope to find that land. He's got Drown the Loch as well if there's something really problematic. So here, he's not in... It's it's funny, like, you'd think, oh, he's missed all these land drops. He can't cast his Wraths. Like, he's in... You'd think he'd be in a terrible position. He's not really. Yeah, it's not the absolute best situation, but you gotta love just watching Shintaro's camera. You know, when I'm missing this many land drops in a row, I'm throwing my hands up. I'm like, are you kidding me? Shintaro's just like, oh, that's a nice one, Deck. Good joke, you know? Like, I'll, I'll laugh at that one and, and move on. Just handles it uh, with such good sportsmanship. You gotta love it. Now the wolf. The problem here is the wolf now survives the crippling fear as well, and uh, Yasuoka yeah. is really, really making the most of the time that he's been given. I love yeah. this. You're going to see a double block? No? Okay. I really do like that, though. It is definitely a good option because you take down the wolf and then you kill the Lovestruck Beast. And at best, you got to hope that, okay, well, now if I draw land four, I can clear up everything. Okay. Uh, but if you brick again or if Shota starts playing five fives, then it's still pretty brutal. So here's the land, and Ishimura is very pleased to see it, you would have thought. And let's see what else Yasuoka commits to the board. Probably what, another it's good, creature it's good, it's that good doesn't that, yeah. die to fear. <laughs> it's good that Yasuoka can't see uh, Ishimura's uh, face here because he might give the game away. Look at him. Look at him rocking uh, from uh, side to side. He knows he's drawn the land. Well, then again, I mean, Ishimura always seems happy no matter what he's drawing, so maybe it wouldn't give the game away too much. Yeah, exactly. Always got a smile on his face. All right, here's Crippling Finn. Probably going to name Rogue. Not going to leave the uh, Edgewall Innkeeper around this time. Yep. That's so going to clear up a lot of the creatures here, but leave those Lovestruck Beasts. And because of the Innkeeper that Yasuoka slams into play, <laughs> that's 10 damage. And Ishimura recognizes that the jig is up. And while he put on a hell of a show there, mm -hmm. not able to find that fourth line for too long. I think had he found it at any point before the time he did, we'd be looking at a very different ball game. But look, I love the way that Yasuoka played there. He recognized what he needed to do in order to keep himself in it in the face of a crippling fear. 
Yep. He diversified he his threat around. portfolio. Yep. yep, as you say, he diversified his threat portfolio, made sure that what he had on the battlefield wasn't just going to get him riggedy wrecked by a sweeper. And thing- sure enough, on the other side of it, Yasuoka emerges. Look, I mean, you know, his opponent missed land drops. That's always going to be good for you. But I yes. like the way that Yasuoka made sure to turn a good thing into a game-winning thing for him there. Uh, it was such well said. And it just always seems like to me, we have this perfect information and we know like, ooh, don't attack with that one one. There could be a soaring thought thief. We know there's a soaring thought thief. Or don't play another card into that wrath because we know Shintaro has it. Sh- Shota Yasoka does not have that information, but still plays like he can see the hand as well. And that just really, you know, shows such a deep understanding of these matchups, what to play around all the time, and just such a smart human being. So Ishimura here. What's he doing right now? Do you, it's it's so <laughs> difficult to read his uh, his body language here. <laughs> yeah, try it. I, and Shantar right now is thinking about Spikefield Hazard. Like, do I want to, with with Shota leaving up just one red, do I want to allow Shota to use his mana this turn? Because you know Shota would be happy to just use the the Spikefield Hazard. And here we see it, just like I was talking about Shota playing around everything, like he can see the information face up. Here goes Shintara doing the same. Shimura really, really putting on a performance for us here as we see a, a soaring thought thief come down. Second Big one draw. drawn. Second one is uh, not a bad one here. So now, do? now we might see some thoring, soaring thought thief um, or thieves guild enforcer shenanigans um, because we're just getting close to putting eight cards in the graveyard. And then, well, you know, you can't really spike field hazard the thieves guild enforcer. But I like not playing it quite yet. Just get four cards here. If Shota Yasoka taps out in some regard, then the coast is clear to play Thieves Guild Enforcer. And if he doesn't, you just attack one more time, mill over the eighth card, and then play it as a 3-2. And then you've completely played around the spike field hazard mm-hmm. that yep. Shintaro has played around beautifully this entire time. Really, game. really smart stuff in yeah. Shimura there. Yeah, he's done a really, really good job. We got the crippling fear proof creature in hand there in Mass Vandal. Look out. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter what you name, mate. <laughs> Egg, <laughs> coward, sand, caribou. It's all of those things and so much more. It would live. Brutal. So what's the play here for Yasuoka this turn? Looks like he's considering Innkeeper. He can go Innkeeper and draw a couple of cards here as well. Not too bad. Yeah, Innkeeper, hold up either Stomp or Spikefield Hazard, I guess. But that does not feel good right now, considering none of these creatures are actually killable. And mm. if Shintaro was playing around these effects the first few turns, I can't imagine he wouldn't play around it again. So I think we're going to see Lash here instead. Yeah. You don't really want to cling, because that would put seven cards and Soaring Thought Thief's... Um, I, I know into the story is seven. Soaring Thought Thief is eight, though, um, as long as I'm not wrong on that, to be able to get this boost and attack for six. So I I would think it's either Lash or nothing here. I think you just Lash away the Ezreal so Keeper. Too. There's not really any reason any reason not to, right? Like, yeah. Why would you not kill this this creature when you when you have the chance to? And use up your mana. Yeah, that's that seems mm. like a, a a nice play here. So the innkeeper kind of sacrificed to that any value there. In come the Soaring Thought Thieves. They're going to come in for eight now. Also, sorry, for four, excuse me, as we get the eight-card threshold needed. Coming for six. My goodness. Numbers, how do they work? No one knows. Yeah, it's tough. There's it's... a cling to dust target if I've ever seen one. Oh, yep, yep. The Ox of Agonis finally hits the bin here. Didn't it's pretty brutal. And number two. It's, it's pretty brutal to actually Ox this turn. You know, getting rid of your entire hand, but surprisingly, Shota's hand is just not that good. So it it would be a consideration. Um, but yeah, Shota has to be doing something. It has to be doing something now. The mm. pressure here is really starting to build up. Yeah, yeah, he really has to start to pull something together here. But I mean, what's his best effort? Like Stomp, Spikefield has it. That's yeah, not and I right. Yeah, I love power word killing this now so that you don't just lose one of your Soaring Thought Thieves to just stop. Make mm-hmm. the two for one happen or one and a half uh, for one with uh, Bone Crusher only losing half of its ability, but that was needed. So Yasuoka, I mean, he had a kind of 
rubbish hand before. It's a lot worse looking now. You got three yeah, cards in it, and just... Luris can come back. Yeah, this is great. Now you get to go Thieves Guild Enforcer. Oh, hello into the story. You get oh, Thieves baby. Guild Enforcer now, and then now next turn you either get to just into the story, refill your hand, or Luris plus Soaring Thought Thief to pressure a ton of damage. And yeah, what the Soaring Thought or Thieves Guild Enforcer is four. Um, another Soaring Thought Thief would make it five power, and then three from that. We're almost already presenting lethal next turn. That'll put a wrench in that plan a bit. Yeah, a Seeker's Chariot with only one blue up. There's no Annul in the deck here, so you don't have to worry about it get it, uh, being countered. And Thieves Good Enforcer comes in as well, down as a 4-2 Death Toucher. You know, it does, of course, trade off with one of those cats, but with Into the Story with Lurus, Ishimura is not going to be short of action anytime soon, you would have thought. Yeah, it's pretty tough here because you really feel like you're so far ahead. You just want to keep the pedal to the metal and go Luris. Another Soaring Thought Thief and just yeah. say, yeah, deal with it. But it's so tempting and it's so hard to pass up. Just draw four. I, I like the Luris Thought Thief um, buff everything up. Oh, this is fine, but you put a five power creature into play instead. I guess that's all right. Thanks. <laughs> and in comes Soaring Thought Thief, soaring over the heads of those cats, milling two more cards. Yeah, and so now, it's back actually... to now it's back to Yas Yasuoko to, to stabilize in the face of this pretty respectable board that Ishimura has built out. And that was honestly probably best possible for Shota. Shota has two clean answers to Gargoyle and was just been saying the whole game, please play that. And now we get to Vandal plus stomp this down mm -hmm. and start getting the Cadillac in for some damage. Now all of a sudden, it's looking a little bit swung the other way but next turn with Luris and soaring thought thief attack for three that does still present a two-turn clock and oh that's a big draw as well the fact wind robber is really nice here it's so innocuous but yep. we've talked about the way it, it uh, combines with with Luris here oh no i'm really mm -hmm. shocked to not see the soaring thought thief before we attack to get that extra point of damage seven instead of six is kind of a big deal here it makes a big difference. It means the Soaring Thought Thieves by themselves are lethal next turn, but Ishimura obviously has got a uh, a different plan. I wonder if he wants to keep up that thing. No, he's going to play the Luris and then the post combat. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, Gargoyle got exiled. Yep. Okay. The Mass Vandal the exiles. Yep. What about the Soaring Thought Thief? That's a good point. Oh, yeah. Spikefield Hazard exiles that. Spikefield Hazard stop. exiled it. Okay. Oh, yep. my yep. goodness. That's... Yep. We both completely missed that one. Yeah. Spikefield yep. Hazard, of course was what killed the Soaring Thought Thief, so he never had that line available to him. Wow, what a pair of turkeys we are, Corey. That makes a lot more sense yeah. why Shintar didn't I'm go I'm sitting there being like, mate, he could be, could be putting so much more pressure on getting there with the Lord, attack with more damage, what are you doing? But no, it turns yeah. out that uh, turns out that the bloke who is, uh, you know, playing for a spot or has already locked up a spot in the top <laughs> eight of the Rivals Gauntlet and will be playing for a seat at the World Championship. Turns out, Corey, that he's no, he knows a little bit better what he's doing than we do. Much smarter than us, absolutely, yeah, and proving it uh, match, in, match in and match out. So, yeah, sorry about that, chat. Yeah, we did, uh, we did miss that one. Apologies to everyone. All right, there's some good removal here. Now we get to choose. Do we want to kill Luris and stop that recursive effect? or try to stop some of this flyers, all of a sudden with Shintaro not being able to put a ton of pressure on, mm. this Azika's Chariot is a three turn clock at the very least, maybe even two the way the numbers works out here. This is all of a sudden advantage creeping back into Shota's favor here. Gonna trade off with the Chariot here, unsurprising, but the damage has kind of already been done. This, this Chariot has generated 10 power so far. Even more now with that uh, with another trigger, so twelve power it made. Here's the other half of giant killer, and that that will lock down another creature starting next turn. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I would I wouldn't be too shocked to see Luris dealt with. Otherwise, you get to just do this wind robber um, play every single turn, and then just block with Jaspera Sentinel to this Merfolk wind robber, and it's like okay, I'll take two. All of a sudden, Shintaro needs a really big draw here to just not be so wildly far behind that I think he can just lose next turn. Like, we got five, six, plus four two twos. Yeah, I mean, that's 14 damage right there, excluding just Ferris as an attacker. So, yeah, we're in a lot of trouble. 
So upkeep, we might see the fire prophecy here. And this is smart stuff from Yasuoka because, of course, Ishimura had two mana untapped. No, just lets him go to main phase. All right. Yeah, if you're going to kill Luris, you want to kill it before Shintaro's turn at all. I've run into this uh, trap many, many times. Oh, because like, okay, you can flash it, yeah. Because you can flash it you can in, flash yeah. It in. All right. yeah. Makes sense. All right. So Ishimura now, two lands in hand, does have the Thieves Guild, Thieves Guild Enforcer in the bin that he can bring back with Luris. He's got Merfolk Wind Robber should he want to uh, draw a card. And it's probably not going to connect because of that, that, that Jasper Sentinel. Yeah, all of a sudden, we were looking at, like, how on earth does Shota Yosoka get back into this I mean, game? His hand, his like, hand just oh. looked terrible. Yeah, it was terrible. And all of a sudden, a pretty bad into the story mm. um, here, drawing up a lot of lands. And all of a sudden, Shintaro looks to be in a very almost hopeless situation as well. Like it was that Masked Vandal turn, right? It was the Masked Vandal turn, a piece of removal as well, cleared the way with some of these creatures. And then the Asika's Chariot can't, finally came out to party. Yeah. Now, things looking much, much better for Yasuoka. Here's the attack. Yeah, Cadillac. Cadillac cruising on in. We'll do that to rogues, and that's really is why that card is the best card against rogues, just because you have to answer the cats eventually, and the fact that you just get to choose when you want to put a Zika's Chariot in danger by crewing it. Vehicles have always been really, really good against spot removal, so yep. a Zika's Chariot really takes advantage of it. So here's Fire Prophecy. Let's see if Yasuoka wants to rummage away this uh shatter skull smashing does he even want to do that i don't know no. with, it, with four, <laughs> four damage that you can do with it that clears up that that Not takes care of a lot of problems yeah i'm doing the math right now and it's looking like you can just hit wind robber and thieves guild enforcer hit that beautiful attack all button and then it's looking like this cling may be able to like stay alive because we can go up to 16 six seven eight <laughs> that's that's exactly 16. So, it, we have lethal through a cling on a creature. So, yeah, I think cling has to be aimed at something, and you have to draw a spell right now. Otherwise, Shoti Ahsoka is going to win this game and be locked into the top eight. All right, you can see Ishimura hoping against Toby finds something. He doesn't find anything, just an island here. One more draw. And so now Fire Prophecy takes out the Lurus can draw with the merfolk wind robber but that's not gonna that's not gonna help him at all here he's drawing very very close to dying i mean look for ishimura a loss is not the end of the world it means he's still making the top eight it probably means yep. he has to will make the top eight and increase the chance left to play him there but there it is overall <gasps> here, to drown the lock that counters the fire prophecy. Yeah, still won't matter because now Shatter Skull Smashing just uh, deals with these two creatures, but it was at least a glimmer of hope. <laughs> it's at least a glimmer of hope, but not enough here. Shota Yasuoka casts a, uh, a Shatter Skull Smashing here. X equals four. You can see that Ishimura is ready and waiting over that good game button. Here's the attack all as well. Yasuoka savoring the moment, taking his time. In they come. And Shota Yasuoka has won this game. He's won this match. And it is our expectation that he finds himself in the top eight of this rival's goal that alongside the person that he has just vanquished, Shintaro Ishimura. So congratulations to Shota Yasuoka.